Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Cheryl Selman, and welcome to The Love Code. I really want to uh, thank you for being with me today. The Love Code is a show that is dedicated to providing you with upliftment, with transformation, with inspiration, and with healing. And I am so pleased that you're joining me today because Today is another wonderful conversation that truly will allow you to connect much more deeply to who you are and the possibilities that you hold within you. I certainly want to uh, begin, but before I do that, I want to announce that, number one, my website, Dr. Cheryl Selman, is a place where you can go, opt in there, and I will send you all the archive shows. And also, my Facebook page, which is What Women Must Know, is another place, if you like it, that I post all of the shows, because there are two shows I do on Progressive Radio Network. The other show is What Women Must Know, hence my Facebook name. And I invite you to come and join me in my community. I provide a lot of ongoing information and insights and some interesting programs and exceptional solutions to problems. So join me there, drcherylselman.com, or like me at What Women Must Know. Okay, uh, I want to just jump into our conversation because it's uh, such an opportunity to talk to my guest, who is Dr. Alberto Violdo. And today we're talking about how spirit can transform your health and help you grow a new body. And just a little bit about uh, Alberto. He is a medical anthropologist, psychologist, and shaman who studied the spiritual practices of the Amazon and the Andes for more than 30 years. While at San Francisco State University, he founded the Biological Self-Regulation Laboratory to study how the mind creates psychosomatic health and disease. Alberto is founder of the world-renowned Four Wind Society and of the Light Body School. In his teachings and writings, he shares the experience of infinity and its ability to heal and transform us, to free us from the temporal chains that keep us fettered to illness, old age, and disease. He instructs individuals throughout the world in the practice of energy medicine. Alberto has written numerous best-selling books, including Power Up Your Brain, The Neuroscience of Enlightenment, with uh, David Perlmutter, his co-author, Shaman, Healer, Sage, and the bestseller One Spirit Medicine. And his most recent book is Grow a New Body, How Spirit and Plant and Power Plant Nutrients Can Transform Your Health. And it's always such an honor and a pleasure to welcome Dr. Alberto Violdo to the show today. So welcome, Alberto. Hola. Hola. Good to be with you, Cheryl. It's good to be. I think we should tell our guests that you actually are calling us from Chile, where you have a beautiful, magnificent center in the, uh, from what I have seen, <laughs> the pictures, and surrounded by a sacred mountain and, and just beautiful nature. Aren't you blessed? We are. We are. In, I'm in the Andes Mountains, and actually our center is also a shamanic monastery. So we have uh, we have retreats throughout the year where we do deep work in the in, in in the shaman's way of wisdom, including not only the Andean and the Amazonian shamanism, but the Tibetan with the Tibetan Buddhist. So it's really a, a treat to to be not only to wake up to meditate, but to be meditating all the time. Well, it sounds incredible. You know, I. I get your uh, weekly posts, and I uh, I, I want to read um, one of the posts that really spoke to me that came out recently, and then we can jump in from there. So in this blog, you said, you said, how does the invisible world of spirit impact health and healing? Surrounding the physical body is a luminous energy field, or LEF, that informs our cells and biome, the community of micro microorganisms in and on our body, how to live in harmony. The LEF is invisible, though there are people who perceive this energy as an aura. 
Your LAF is a biological field which extends beyond your skin to the farthest reaches of the universe, diminishing in intensity, yet never vanishing altogether. Your LAF contains stars and galaxies within it. From a scientific perspective, your LAF can be thought of as the software that instructs your DNA, the hardware to repair your body. It does this through your brain and the nervous system via the chakras or energy centers of the body. Well, that's pretty, <laughs> you know, that's such a powerful um, writing, powerful statement, and yet it's really where I'd like us to begin because in your book, Grow a New Body, which we actually had a conversation, if people want to listen to the conversation that I had with Alberto on what women must know, go to the archives, because we talked about the physical components of how to literally rejuvenate, regenerate, heal your body from any condition at any stage at any age. This conversation is the other piece of this profound transformation that can happen to our body, which is incorporating the spiritual understanding of who we are and how we truly create our body. So, Alberto, I'm going to just let you jump in <laughs> from this point on. Sure. Good. You know, the, uh, it's such a shame that, that uh, in the West we separate the spiritual from the physical because there's nothing as spiritual as biology. I mean, biology is so exquisite. You know, the fact that you have cells that get together with other cells to create tissues, that get together with other tissues to create organs, that get together with other organs to create eagles. That is so extraordinary. <clears throat> and I think that that's only in our Western kind of bipolar culture that we separate the spirit from the flesh, from the body. And, um, and it's so striking to me when I go to um, to spiritual gatherings or conferences to see how out of touch with their body some of these very spiritual people are. But but this is um, I think we spoke about that in our last meeting. But truly truly deep spirituality is transforming even of the body. It's the alchemy that consumes and combusts the old body that we inherited and updates it and upgrades it into a healed and holy and really luminous body while we're still in the flesh. This is an ancient wisdom. This this wisdom has existed for thousands and thousands of years. It's certainly in the shamanic tradition that you have been involved with. It's in all ancient cultures. And unfortunately... It's an understanding and a wisdom and a truth that we in our modern 21st century world has forgotten. And yet it's so fundamental to really restore harmony within us. And uh, I mean, that's why it's such a, um, an, an eternal message. And that's why it's so important about the work you're bringing into the world to help restore this consciousness, this awareness, because we have to understand that our physical body is a manifestation of how we are working with these energies, these more subtle energies, to truly heal and restore. So, I, you know, this is your work, and I'd like you to help people understand this, Alberto, understand how we need to, the role of the energy body, our luminous field, how it impacts our emotions, and all the way down into the physical well, first we need to really understand that we have a luminous energy field that surrounds the physical body and organizes the physical body in the same way <clears throat> that a magnet organizes iron filings on a piece of glass. So that if you find yourself with an illness, with a heart condition, that's manifested in the energy body years before it manifested in the physical if you find that your family has a history of cancer, those imprints are latent in the energy body long before they manifest in the physical. And then if you eat a whole bunch of sugar and if you're, you're really stressed out, these will be cancer triggers. But it's manifested in the field long before it manifests in the body. And what we know how to do today, what shamans 
have known how to do for 50,000 years is how to clear these imprints from the energy field so that they don't have to manifest in the body. But it's not only a matter of removing this. this these imprints are like stale chi, stale, dense, thick, kind of dead energies that contain information. So it's not only about removing these imprints, say, for breast conditions or heart conditions. It's about learning the lesson that you need to learn in order to let go of that imprint. So this is what the shaman does. The shaman, she will work with your energy field and will extract, will remove that imprint, upgrade the information in the field, but then help you learn what it is that you came to learn, that you were programmed to learn through extreme suffering. So you avoid the, you avoid the disease, but you cannot escape the lesson. And the lesson well, really has that, to do with charity or with compassion or with forgiveness. So we need to work on that side too. Yes, I, I, I just wanted you to expand on understanding the soul's part in healing, understanding what the soul is and what life, you know, why we create the circumstances, be it illness, be it difficulty in relationships or finances, the things that create stress. What is really the greater purpose for this, Alberto? Well, there's really no greater purpose for it. That's just kind of the lesser purpose. Because if we have to learn through illness or through suffering, it means that we usually miss the opportunity to learn directly from spirit, from wisdom directly, and we have that opportunity. So this is what, what I do today, Cheryl, is that I teach and I train modern shamans. So we've trained over 10,000 men and women from around the planet, including medical doctors and body workers and, and lay people, how to work directly with the energy field. And it's a, it's a 300 hour month long training where we train modern shamans to not only heal disease, but to prevent disease. Because the shamans are masters of prevention. And it's, prevention is like changing the oil in your automobile. Treatment is like changing the engine. So you want to avoid treatment but practice prevention. So if you can clear the imprints from the energy field, if you can learn the lessons about compassion and forgiveness and no judgment that is embedded in that condition, then you don't need to live out the disease. But this is only half of the story because for the high shamans in the Andes, once you're well, it's when the real work begins. Then you want to go through this alchemical process where you transform your physical body into a sacred body, into a luminous body that has acquired infinity. And let me take a moment to explain this because in the West we believe that we have a, an indestructible soul that will continue through eternity no matter what we do. And the shamans look at that and they smile because they understand that we have nine lives like the cats do, like the jaguars do. So that we have nine reincarnations, more or less, give or take a half a dozen, if you've been good to other people and to the animals, but we have a finite number of births in order to acquire a luminous body and to acquire eternity. So for the West, eternity is guaranteed and you have an eternal soul. For the shamans, eternity is something that you have to discover through your process of healing and the, your process of our chemical transformation of becoming divine. So this is so when they first heard the priest speaking, in fact, there's, there's a, 
when they when the priest arrived in the Americas, they talked about this eternal soul that you really didn't have to attend to very much. So you could just keep on building churches and cathedrals and living in slavery and getting your reward in the afterlife. And the shamans were just laughing and they were saying, look, you have to, your most important job in this world is not to acquire fame or fortune or a bigger bank account, but to awaken your luminous nature, your luminous body, so that you could step into infinity. And so here's a a big clash of mythologies between the shamanic and the and the European Judeo Christian mythology that uh, that created a lot of problems in the Americas when the Europeans arrived because the shamans were focused like the Tibetans are and say, hey, let's do our practice, let's clear our field, let's transform what the Tibetans call the five poisons that include greed and jealousy and anger and um, um, and judgment into nectar. Let's transform them so that, because we getting a human body is such a precious gift and such a rare one. How's that for an alternate wow. mythology? <clears throat> wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. So the purpose is clearing the field, clearing your field of misperceptions of the negative emotions so you can uh, um, uh, elevate, would you say elevate your your frequency? I'm trying to find the right languaging to express this so people understand so so you can align more with the with this with the energies of of the divine energies is that was no, is that what the, the purpose of it is so you could become enlightened and for see for the shaman enlightenment is not the end goal it's the beginning that's when the real work really begins that's when the human journey really begins. But you can't become enlightened if you have a bunch of mercury in your brain or if you've been exposed to lead paint and lead toxicity or if, or if you're struggling to survive or if you're dealing with a major health um, concern. That's why the shamans were also uh, great healers. And then once you acquired and returned to health, then you could focus on the great work, which was become, yes. to become enlightened, to become light. And, you know, and to become light, you have to lighten up a little bit. You know, not only have a sense of humor, but also get rid of some of the baggage. And then the true work began. Then you could step into infinity and take your consciousness with you beyond death. And that was when the great adventure really started. So this was Earth School. And what you learn here gave you the opportunity to acquire, really, infinity. And you have met many shaman when you have, and you are in the Andes now. Have you met someone who has achieved this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What was that like have I met, such a Well, it's just the most common and ordinary experience you can imagine, but deeply natural and profound. And not only have I met people, but this is what we train our students in, not just how to heal disease. That's the you know, because if you're bleeding, you can't work on your meditation, right? So this exactly. is the beginning is to heal yourself, clear the imprints, and as you do so and you upgrade the quality of your brain through certain brain foods that I talk about in my new book, and Grow a New Body, then you're not only growing a new physical body that is healthy and healed, but you're growing your sacred body, your luminous body. And that's the body that's going to take you beyond this lifetime. So, yeah, I have met many people like this, and, and we 
we train our students to do this. And that's not that difficult to do. But you have to begin with with purifying the physical body. And the shamans used to do it, for example, by going on a vision quest, on a 48-hour, even a 48-hour water fast. It is, you know, stunning the research that shows that a 48-hour water fast before going into surgery will accelerate your recovery tremendously. So, because you're, you're not toxic. But yeah, this is what the goal of shamanism is, is to learn how to get out of this life alive and to really honor and take advantage of this opportunity that we have of being in a body to learn the lessons of infinity and immortality. And not just to fix the seas. That's the beginning. Uh, those are concepts that are just so hard to grasp with the mind, aren't they? You know, I mean, we're, we talk about it, we talk around it, we explain it, but unless you have experience, you really don't understand what it means. Well, I think we've all had these experiences. And, you know, for example, if, there, if you go and do a shamanic ceremony or an ayahuasca ceremony, you're able to glimpse infinity. But then it's hard to bring that back. Uh, largely because our brains have been broken in the West with all of the toxins that we are exposed to. But I remember being in the Amazon and having to go through a two-week-long diet or dieta to prepare for an ayahuasca ceremony, a very powerful psychedelic, in which you understood the nature of the cosmos in its totality. And then the next morning, I was full of this wisdom and by lunchtime it was all gone. <laughs> so this is what we need to work on. We need to this is to run this new software, we have to upgrade the hardware, upgrade the brain. So that this is why I wrote the Grow New Body book, because we're not only interested in and in, in repairing the body, but in upgrading the body and the brain. So let me tell you a really interesting experiment that was done about 50 years ago by Fritz Polp. He took two Petri dishes, which are glass dishes for bacterial cultures, and put the same bacteria. He used like a yogurt bacteria in each one of them. And then he put a, a pathogen, a poison in one of them. And all of the bacteria died. All of the good lactobacillus died. And the other dish wasn't affected at all. And then he repeated the experiment, putting the bacteria in two quartz dishes. And quartz allows for full spectrum light to go through. And then he put a pathogen, a poison in one of them, and all the bacteria died. All the other bacteria in the other Petri dish were alive, but when he studied them, he found that they had developed antibodies to the pathogen without having any kind of communication. Somehow, the bacteria were communicating with light, with photons, with biophotons. So imagine if we could grow a new body that did not have to get sick in order to train the immune system. Because that's how the immune system learns. You, you never get the same flu twice, right? But we learn to train the immune system by getting sick. Well, imagine if we could learn directly from light. And this is the human that's appearing in the planet today. There's a new human that's being born, that's you and I, that are not the children. We're unraveling our DNA code another strand to be able to learn directly from light, to heal directly with light, and to awaken our nature of light. Um, and it's so exciting to be part of that, of that um, movement and this is really why we train healers so that they can heal their, their clients and their patients enough for them to begin this great process of becoming light beings. It's so interesting that you're talking about light because I 
have uh, I've interviewed um, a, a neurosurgeon, Dr. Jack Cruz. I don't know if you've heard of Jack, but he has uh, been was really sick. You know, was obese, and through an epiphany, he realized he spent all his time in darkness and operating theaters around technology indoors. And so he began to go outside and watch the sunrise every morning. And uh, he had a tremendous transformation in his health. And since then, he's been a teacher and kind of a heretic in his own right um, because he says that it's the light. It's getting up every morning and watching the sunrise that gets into our eyes and activates the melanopsin and all these hormones that switch on the whole body to start operating in a balanced way, which I have been doing, Alberto. Every morning I get up and watch the sunrise. And uh, it, it's been incredible experience to just receive the light from the sun, which we are, we're paranoid about, but it is the source of so much healing on all levels. Yeah, and be careful because you can do that at sunrise and sunset, but you can burn your retina if you're not careful. And yes, that will, will you know, We've been waking up with the sun and, and sitting around a fire at night uh, for millions of years. And this resets your rhythms, absolutely. And what we're interested in doing is not only resetting our rhythms to the sun, but we're interested only also in downloading the codes for a new human that are coming from the sun. This is why all of the shamanic societies speak of the sun as intititas, as father son, as, as the source of life. And it's the codes that come in the fall during these great plasma storms that uh, erupt in the sun half a dozen times a year that the codes for a new human come into the planet. The codes for a new, for, for evolution and and it happens across the board, not just humans, but the plants and the animals. Everybody needs that sunlight. We think sunlight is good for producing vitamin D. Sunlight is, contains the codes for continuing our evolution. And if we don't continue our evolution, it's like not updating your iPhone. You know, you're a couple of generations behind. You're not going to be able to get the call from God anymore. Wow, you know, <laughs> that is so profound. So having ex exposure, being outside, being connected to nature is necessary for us to receive that energy from the sun and the codes that are embodied in those frequencies. Is that, is that, is that correct, Alberto? Totally. Those codes are embedded in light and they are transmitted by light. And so when you go outside, you're not only getting vitamin D, you're getting these codes that are going into your brain and into your nervous system. So go outside and take your top off. You know, don't just expose your face. Get some sun on your body, particularly that early morning sun and evening sun as the sun is setting. And the, But really, the important thing here is not only the physical sun but the nature of the light so the we know that the sun is a ball of burning plasma that you could fit one million earths inside the sun but the ancients did not know this the ancients when they looked at the sky they saw that there was a hole in the sky that the light would pour in through so what they were really interested in was the light and the information contained by the light. And not only did they get the sunlight <clears throat> from our sun, because the sun, the sun is our local star, but they went out at night and got the light from distant suns. So, for example, the, the Inca in particular uh, were, were interested in getting the light from the Pleiades. So the Pleiades is, um, is a distant solar system, and they would go out 
during certain times of the year and receive the light of the Pleiades right before the dawn, right before our sun came out and all the stars went into hiding, they would receive the starlight, the sunlight, but from a distant sun. And this is part of the shamanic mythology which says that we're walking two roads. We're walking the red road, but we're also walking the silver road. The red road is the road we walk here on Earth. And all of us are Aboriginal people. We're all walking the red road, but we're also walking the road through the Milky Way, through the stars. We're also star travelers. So connecting to these distant star systems reminds us of of our star brothers and sisters and of the the fact that the universe is so populated with life and that we continue to evolve from one planetary system to another. But that's getting a little bit esoteric. We want to focus on how do we help this planet before we lose it and how do we participate in our evolution to acquire this this luminous body. And this is what grow new bodies about. We have the ability to grow a healthy new body, physical body, but we have to do it first by growing a healthy luminous body because it's the luminous body that renews, regenerates, and organizes the physical body. So, for example, if you have a deceased organ and you take the organ or the tissue out, but you don't change the field, you don't change the blueprint, the disease is going to come back because it's still in the luminous blueprint. And if you work on the luminous blueprint, clearing that imprint for the disease, eventually the body will return to health unless that tissue or organ is so severely damaged that it cannot come back. So the, the shamans have focused for millennia on the energy system and today we have the opportunity to do both because our science has advanced so much that we can exchange and dialogue with the ancient science, the ancient wisdom, and put it to practice in our lives. So what would you say, um, I'm sure people who are listening, the questions they may have in their mind now is, okay, what can I do to begin to heal on this level? Uh, heal on the level of um, healing the, the the energy field, the uh, accessing more of the luminous body. What and and you talk about this in your book. So help us understand some of the practical things we can start doing today to start this healing process and expansion of our consciousness. Well, you know, looking at the at the dawn. The sun and the dawn is a great energy practice. I'd like to tell people if they want a single practice that they can do is to practice forgiveness. So beginning by forgiving themselves and then forgiving the people that they believe have wronged them. And I've got a fun story to share, which is that one of my students came to me and said, uh, finally, I've forgiven my mother. And her mother had been awful, had been horrible to her. I finally forgiven my mother. And I said to her, well, have you asked her to forgive you? And she said, why should I ask her to forgive me? She was abusive, neglectful, a drunk. I said, look, you were inside her belly for nine months and you were like a parasite. You were eating before she did. If you needed calcium, you would take it from her bones. You've got to go and ask her to forgive you, if nothing else, for what you did to her. So we both had a good laugh, and she went back to her mother and asked for forgiveness. So, Because she was still stuck in this place that she believed her mother had done something to hurt her. And we need to practice forgiveness across the board. That's number one. That breaks the the energetic cords that we have with people that we have an emotional charge with. It cuts those cords. 
And then we are free from, from having to learn ever again in that way. So that's a really good practice. The, uh, the second practice is to, you know, uh, Alan Watts, I don't know if you remember Alan Watts, the, the, oh, the sure. uh, philosopher. Sure. Alan Watts used to ask, do you know why angels can fly? And he'd say, it's because they take themselves very lightly. So this is another great practice. If you can, so you should have your sense of lightness not depend on what's happening to you in your life, but cultivate a sense of of lightness. And that doesn't mean that you become trivial or superficial, but really that you can help others to step out of this totally dreary, heavy place that most people are living in. Uh, And then when you practice a little bit of lightness, you know that this is a... uh, that that this whole experience of reality is really a stage where this drama is going on and you can either be an actor or you can be the author of the story. And then you become, you don't become the story any longer, you become the storyteller. You you become the, the you're still an actor, you're still a participant, but you have your hand on the script as well. You don't have to live the tired old stories of our parents and grandparents. So the, you know, but first we have to heal the body, we have to detox the body because we need an intact brain to access the states of consciousness where we understand the interconnectedness of all things. And I know we covered this in our uh, last interview, but I really want to go back to it for a moment. You know, you've got to get the mercury and the heavy metals out of your system. You've got to eat organic and drink clean water and clean air. So, you know, if you are living in a city and you don't have a water filter on your shower, you're showering with chlorinated water. And that means that you're killing off all of the flora, the good flora on your skin. And you're going to get skin disease. And our flora is not only in our gut, it's throughout our bodies. And if you use mouthwash, you're killing off the flora in your mouth and you get gum disease. So we live, we are a colony organism living in a great relationship with all of the bacteria in our body. I had a friend of mine who's a uh, probiotic specialist he asked me the other day, Alberto, do you know why people kiss? And I said, of course I know why people kiss. <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. Think back when you were 11. Do you remember talking to your friends about kissing and somebody saying that, you know, that you would have someone else stick their tongue in your mouth? And you went, yuck, that's so unhygienic. But then we turn 13 and we think it's fantastic. And he said, well, we kiss, really, so that we can, our bugs, our flora can tell if we're, they're going get to get along with the other person's flora. And if they get along, then we, we think it's love. So we're calling the organism. <laughs> with well, all of this I never bacteria. thought about that. <laughs> Next time you kiss, uh, and you know, one of the best ways to get... Uh, to replenish your flora and your gut is to get a get a puppy. Get a puppy and let it lick your face, and you're gonna restore your flora within weeks. So we need to we need to help the body, but then we need to. That's not the that's the end point of medicine, but that's the beginning point of shamanism. Then we begin the great journey into infinity, and that's the that's really what we came here to learn. There was a time when I ran um, courses on, you know, personal development and transformational changes, and and people would have major breakthroughs for a period of time, and then they'd revert back. And I'm going, what's missing here? And I thought, well, it's it's healing the body. If you have a, a corroded battery, that you can't hold the charge. So I 
then would bring people to a healing center in Hawaii where we worked with a Hawaiian teacher, Kahuna, and did a whole 10-day cleansing detox program. And that was like 25 years ago. (laughs) That, That made such a huge difference in people because of everything you've been saying. If you have... Um, the metaphor I like to use is a corroded battery because you're so toxic, you cannot hold the charge of health and and a greater awareness and consciousness and focus and all the things that we need to really thrive and heal in our world. That's a great metaphor. I love that metaphor. And remember that the... The battery not only holds the charge, the battery is designed to start something, to start your engine, to go somewhere. And the place that we want to explore going to is a place of exceptional health because today, every one of our listeners is going to live to be a hundred. Unless you have, you know, unless you you go bungee cord jumping and you forgot to tie the cord to your ankle you know, or something else terrible happens, you're going to live to be 100, but you don't want to spend the last 30 of those years bedridden or the last 10 years unable to remember the name of your of your children. So this is critical today. And I remember when I was a young medical anthropologist in the Amazon that I would... I was funded actually by a big Swiss pharmaceutical company. They wanted to find the next great cancer cure. And I remember going to villages and there was no cancer and no heart disease and no Alzheimer's. In fact, Alzheimer's did not exist until a 100 years ago till Dr. Alzheimer's put his name to it, where he found a patient that had these symptoms. So these are the illnesses of the West. They're not the illnesses of old age. They're the illnesses of the West. And if we can, and we know today how we can prevent Alzheimer's, how we can prevent the dementia through what we eat and and through the detoxifiers. And this is in my book, Grow a New Body. So after we do that, it's where the fun begins. But today, the uh, the... The disease care system that we have, that we call a healthcare system, is really a disease care system, is totally swamped. And uh, we're not going to be able to to help. We, we can't help. We cannot cure these terrible conditions, but we can prevent them. And, um, and this is the key today. Shamans in the past never had to deal with, with toxic uh, metals, with, with mercury. All the mercury they was bound to the earth and only when you had a volcanic eruption would you have mercury in the atmosphere. And today, of course, we cannot eat the big fish in the ocean because they're full of mercury and and mercury is a neurotoxin. So we need to develop the survival skills and the detox skills. And then we need the spiritual practice that can bring us the great rewards and treasures that are available to us today. So... How important is meditation in our ability to grow a new body? Well, meditation is the beginning. Meditation is the quieting of the mind. And that's, for many people, becomes the goal. But that's really where you begin the exploration of the invisible world. And what the Eastern practitioners did is that they turned the mind to study the mind whereas we in the west we use the mind to study the world they turn the mind within but in order to meditate you have to have the right brain chemistry so if you have the wrong brain chemistry you're not going to be able to meditate you're going to be wondering if you have if an important email came in in the last three minutes so you've got to have the right the brain chemistry to support these states of stillness and of quiet. So we need to do that by repairing the gut because the gut produces the serotonin that's required by the brain to create the bliss molecules that allow you to meditate. If you don't have the bliss molecules, if you only have the stress molecules like adrenaline and cortisol, you're going to be angry. 
So it, you can't meditate when you're angry. But if you have the bliss molecules, if you're producing these, and they're produced in the brain by the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is damaged by fluoride. And every water system in America puts fluoride into the water. And there's no science to support fluoride as protecting your teeth in any way. There's no no good science behind it. And a lot of science that shows that if you're Pineal gland is calcified by fluoride. You cannot produce the bliss molecules. You cannot experience oneness. So we have to get a water filter that filters out the fluoride. And then you can meditate. And then the brain is going to be turning serotonin, which is, if you remember the formula for serotonin, it's 5-HT, 5-hydroxy, which is water, Tryptamine, it's a tryptamine. And when the pineal gland finds this tryptamine, it turns it into, sorry, finds serotonin, it'll turn it into melatonin so you could sleep. And then if you, if it, if it's strong and active, it will tweak serotonin, 5-HT is a tryptamine, turn it into dimethyl tryptamine by adding two methyl rings to it. And dimethyltryptamine is DMT, is ayahuasca, that the brain produces naturally. And then you can meditate. Then you understand the interconnectedness of all things. So it's all interrelated. You know, that that's such an interesting um, insight, Alberto, because there is so much information now on the gut microbiome, repairing the gut microbiome for health, for healing autoimmune diseases, and to support um, depression, anxiety, because the neurotransmitters are created in the gut. But the piece that I never realized until you're talking about it is the an even greater purpose, which is to create these uh, neurotransmitters to allow us to enter a, a quieter mind so we can enter more a profound states of consciousness or, or just to 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 be able to have a quiet mind. Totally. And you know the and it's all because of your gut bacteria manufacturing serotonin that then is able to support brain function and access these higher states of consciousness. So people, you know, I was having dinner with a friend who's a a neuroscientist, and he said, no, Alberto, the pathway to the brain is different. It's not through the serotonin in the gut. And I said to him, obviously, you've never tried ayahuasca. He said, no, why? He said, because ayahuasca is identical to serotonin, and then you have the, the, the MAO inhibitor, which is this plant that inhibits the production of MAO in the gut that would destroy DMT, and it allows it to go in through the gut wall and into the brain. And so many of our foods are MAO inhibitors, allowing, like, the stinky French cheeses are fantastic MAO inhibitors. And they allow the serotonin in the gut to go into the bloodstream, to the brain, and to support these heightened states of communion and of consciousness. <laughs> wow, so so we may all be searching for stinky French cheeses now to help us elevate our consciousness. Yeah. But you know, so, <laughs> you, the, the stinky French cheese alone, without the without the serotonin, won't make any difference, huh? <laughs> okay, good. That's good. You know, but. You know, the, what you're elaborating on to me is so profound because you have created like a full circle understanding of integrating how by repairing our brain, which is damaged, we are all exposed to heavy metals in our environment through, as you were saying, the water, the air, the food, um, that that impairment of our brain because we're collecting these heavy metals and holding them 
in the brain and other parts of the body directly impacts the state of consciousness we can access. Yep, absolutely. That's the case. So that is, you know, it's today, so important. Today we have, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, today we have no, you the first. science. <laughs> we have the science today, and we have the ancient wisdom teachings. And <clears throat> part of the problem, one of the indications that you have a broken brain is if you find yourself saying, but that's not scientific. So what that means is that you think science is the new religion, and if it's not, you know, science is about discovery. And before Newton was hit in the head by a falling apple and discovered gravity, gravity had existed since the dawn of time. So it's not scientific means somebody... It doesn't fit in somebody's belief system. And today our belief structures are killing us. And we have to come up with more original, more feminine, more sustainable, more creative, more healthy belief structures. So we don't believe that that dementia, that Alzheimer's that strikes 50% of the population is normal. It's not natural. <laughs> Maybe the new normal, but it's not natural. No, and, you know, we really need to wake up because we get so immersed in uh, what we find as normal around us. We forget that it is not natural, and we need to be reminded so we can look and search the real solutions. It's like waking up out of the matrix, which is my favorite movie and my favorite metaphor, Alberto. It's like we have to wake up because we have all been asleep and we just go about our days and our daily routine unconscious as to the great potential and possibilities exist within us. And that is why your work is so profound, because it's it's allowing people to remember and to wake up. If you have a broken brain, it's really hard to remember, not just remember where you put your keys, but remember who you are. Yeah, and you forget your social skills. You can't interact with people anymore because you can only interact with machines. Yeah, so important because there was a recent study that I uh, posted on Facebook that was talking about how young children who are on their devices are starting to have more uh, cognitive impairment. So we are... we we are. Uh, seriously altering the development of the brains in our children, which does not portend well for the future. It's a very scary situation with the kids and the devices. And, you know, maybe it's our time to yield our spot as the most intelligent organism in the planet to the machines. Maybe they're they're going to be replacing us you know, it brings us back to the matrix. Wow. So, but, <laughs> you know, before we can truly become that new species that the shamans and of all societies have prophesied, Homo luminous, yes. they call this new species, the Andean people. Before we can become that new species, we have to heal our bodies and then say yes to a calling that we all have. For the shaman, there's only one ailment. You know, we have over 14,000 different diseases in the West. But for the shaman, there's only one ailment, and which is to forget the sacred purpose why you were born. And if you forget what that sacred purpose was, then you will get ill and continue to be ill until you remember. So let's remember without having to get sick. Wow. That's so that's so that's so profound. That is so profound. You know, that uh it's our only illness is forgetting our sacred purpose. That really resonates with me. And um look, 
there's so much Alberto Vialdo has put together in this book, Grow a New Body. Uh, you know, our conversation is just so amazing. Uh, I'm going to include, if people get the archive of the show, the previous conversation that I had on what women must know. So best way for people to do that is either search the archives or opt in to my website, Dr. Cheryl Selman, or the or like me over at What Women Must Know on Facebook because I'll in our uh, conversation today, I'll add the first conversation. Um, I, I just want to really thank you, Alberto. I, I, you know, the more we have these conversations, the more I really appreciate the depth and breadth and profundity of your work and the mission that you are on in, on this planet. And, um, and I, I really want to thank you for how much of, you know, 30 more years of your life you've dedicated, probably more actually, to, to bringing this sacred, this sacred message, this sacred medicine into our lives and making it available. So, uh, you know, we're all so grateful to you. And uh, I really um, wish you the greatest success in all of your endeavors with your wonderful center in Chile for your new book, Grow a New Body, and for people to really seriously listen, hear what we've been talking about. If nothing else, um, begin to ask for forgiveness, watch the sun, but most of all, read Grow a New Body because all of the solutions and strategies are in there waiting for you to receive them. Absolutely. And uh, again, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Do you have one more words of wisdom, one more sentence you can give us before we have to end our conversation today? Yeah, you know, there's no chocolate in the spirit world. So we came here to really enjoy life and um, and to enjoy all aspects of life, but at the same time to really learn the great, great lessons and um, so enjoy, enjoy enjoy your body, enjoy your health, enjoy the chocolate and a glass of wine, and um, and at the same time attend to attend to this luminous body that we're all growing together, so we can awaken the planetary mind. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Alberto. Thank you so much for being with us, and I want people to please go and visit your website, which is the fourwinds.com thefourwinds.com Alberto all the best blessings to you thank you bye 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 now and to all of uh, my listeners wow what a great conversation thank you for joining me on the love code and uh, trust you'll be back again next week at the same time same place and until then have a week filled with love peace and harmony bye for now Thank you, Cheryl. Big love to you. Alberto, all the best. Hey, it's, it was that was an amazing conversation. Thank you so much, so much for bringing that all this wisdom through to us. Anytime. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you for the beautiful work you do. Um. Thank you. Absolutely. Hope to meet you one day, wherever. <laughs> and you take care. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye now.